You know, I, we just got done playing uh, what I thought was a, a, an epic volleyball match in, in a great uh, environment. Uh, I thought the coverage for the match going in was just was uh, was probably uh, set the standard of, for a regular season match. I thought there was a. Uh, um, you know, going in, a, a lot of excitement for the match, and I, I thought the play lived up to it uh, from both sides. You know, it's one of those matches where whether you win or lose, I think both teams and both coaches uh, uh, learn a lot, and we certainly did. It, uh, and that's, uh, you know, going into the match, uh, you know, I, I, I've mentioned that I was almost as excited about practice this week as I was for the match itself, because uh, you know, you, you know, when you play Nebraska, that you're gonna win or lose, you're gonna learn a lot about yourself, and it's just really exciting to to get back in the gym afterwards. Um, as far as the match itself, it, uh, it you know, the both teams played. Uh, the level of play was was really really exceptional, really high. Uh, on on both sides, uh, I think every player on the court went through some struggles and had huge, big time moments, big time slugfest back and forth. Uh, you know, we, uh, we we didn't close out set four or set five the way that um, we'd want to, but a part of big part of that was was them on the other side of the net, and those would be some things hopefully we'd learn uh, from going forward. Uh, and then, yeah, we've got uh, Michigan State and, and Minnesota this week, two teams that will be playing uh, the first time. So uh, looking forward to that. Okay, we've got a question from Dennis and then Mark. And then we'll you talk about what you, you uh, learned from that. It, it's been a while since you'd played a, a high-level team um, and been challenged. What did you come away and what's the first things that you feel like you learned about your team and what you need to uh, pr progress at this point. Though so we were really good defensively, um, it's uh, it, you know uh, I I think the quality of our defense doesn't get talked about enough uh, or appreciated as, as much, and I certainly understand that because of the offensive firepower that we have. But this is a really good defensive team, and I thought we were. We we're really good defensively. <clears throat> then, uh, I thought our serving was good, not great. Uh, although the quality of their passers can can sh uh, can make you feel that you're not serving as well as what you are. But I, I feel like we we've been serving better sometimes in that environment on the road. That, that you know that that can be a, a tough deal to go back here and and. Uh, you know, vary some planes and serve it flat, and, and all those things. When you've got uh, that many fans kind of right on top of you, that can be make it a little bit tougher. But I feel like we can serve better. They put like 52 balls on Sarah Franklin, and she was, you know, uh, I'm sure there's a couple balls she wishes she had back. Um, but the quality of the serves on those at the end in the fourth and the fifth that she was having to battle to fight to keep off the floor was was really impressive. But uh, I mean, her passing numbers for the match, you know, just an onslaught at, at her. And she she just the the uh, the skill and the toughness and the execution on her on her part for three hours and fifteen minutes was was really impressive. Um, I didn't feel like we had a great connection going with Anna. Uh, and I, I feel like part of that was just, you know, it's a, uh, you know, it, MJ being out for a couple weeks, I, I think kind of showed a little bit in, in that connection at, at times. Uh, you know, Devin being out a little bit showed uh, at, at times both of them are capable of playing a little bit better than, than maybe what they would. But, you know, this is a hard sport to play when you're not practicing, when you're not in the gym, and you're coming back from injuries. Um, it's, uh, um, you know, I thought Timmy played well, Gigi played, I, you know, I, I just, I thought for the most part our team played well. Uh, I thought both teams played really well. Um, we just, we, you know, we needed to play a little bit cleaner in big time situations. Um, a couple of things. One, 
the final set, uh, I think it hit, your team's hitting percentage was like 545, no, no hitting errors. Yeah. Um, I guess one I want to, if you could speak to, the, especially the, the level of play in that final set from both teams. Both teams were hitting, may, maybe not from a defensive standpoint, but from they were, both teams were hitting pretty well there in, in the final set. And then two, just what did you see from, I know you got high expectation from, from your players, but what did you see from, from them after the match and what are you interested to see from them, you know, this week? <laughs> You're not expecting uh, a set where both Wisconsin and Nebraska were hitting over 500. I mean, especially that's not how the match was was played. I think uh, our third set, we might have hit over 300. But the other sets were, you know, around two uh, for us, one or two. And I think they were around 100 for most of the sets or something. All of a sudden, you're just exploding offensively in the fifth set. Um, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, attackers were taking really good swings. Um, it's, uh, uh, you know, and part of that was the ball control that was 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 being executed at, at that at that time. Uh, we had three net violations in the fifth set, and you just can't have that. I think it was three net violations and a uh, and a service error. That you know, um, it's hard to get on your team too much about those net violations, especially when you. You know, what do we have, 12 blocks in the second set? I've never seen that before. I mean, it's just, it's, it's un, unreal. And, uh, you know, we were trying to be aggressive blocking, and, uh, and, it, and it caught up with us a little bit, maybe with a little bit of, of uh, technique there at the end. Fatigue might have played a part in it. I, I don't know. Uh, we switched Devin and Anna in the fifth set. Would I have done that again? I, I, I don't know. Um, and Harper Murray, you know, who was struggling all match long, burst out for seven kills in the fifth. I mean, it just um, – I think what Nebraska was able to do – I mean, it, you know, if you think about it, it's, it's, really, it's really impressive. I mean, we, we blocked them off the uh, – 12 blocks in, in the second set is incredible. And, and then they started having a lot of hitting errors like really bad hitting errors at times. And you know that block is in their head. For them to to calm themselves down and get back to taking really good swings and not give up on the match, I mean, that the mental toughness on their side of the net was, was, was really impressive. You talked about some of the things that, you know, like serving, and you talked about Anna's play and Devin's play, for example, things that you can correct in practice when you get the opportunity to practice. But – for a program that doesn't lose very often at all, which obviously is a good problem to have, from an intangibles perspective, what can this squad that's been so elite for so long, what can they learn from this loss? We talked going into the match, um, primarily because, I mean, it, it, the preparation, it, believe it or not, is, is very similar from match to match. I mean, it, it's, it's one of the reasons why we've been so good over the years is because we do take every opponent. Um, the hype around matches can be different. Uh, what you're wanting to make sure is that your team is trusting their training and, and uh, you know, and you're respecting everybody. And there is also the understanding that this is, this is October, you know. Um, and so we know that there's a lot of eyeballs on this match and just seeing the numbers for the, the, the rating for, for that match, there were a lot of uh, eyeballs on that match. But, you know, what we talked about going in is if we lose this match, you're, you know what you're going to hear from me. We have to get better as a team. And if we win this match, you know what you're going to hear from me. We've got to get better. And it's uh, – there's too much of the season left to get caught up in the result of that. Uh, you know, we've got bigger things going on. We still control our own destiny, if you will, of, of a Big Ten championship. Um, this match, win or lose, doesn't define us. Uh, we've got to get better. But it's, it's a match between two teams in a great environment um, that's uh, – maybe carries a little bit of extra weight and we're going to have bigger matches as we're moving forward and that's that's what's exciting. Kelly, we <laughs> talked to you a lot about the growth of this game and things like that. What first off, what does it mean to be involved in this game that's going to be the first one on Fox and then 
Second, it comes right after a Packers game. I mean, for people in this state who maybe haven't dialed into your team before, I mean, what would be your message to them that, that hopefully, you know, they want to lock into a game like that? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why people aren't on the bandwagon from the state if they're not on here. So it's a uh, bit Uh, the Nebraska match had students, hundreds of students waiting outside all day long, camping out. Um, it was, uh, the, you know, and even a fan base as strong as theirs, that, that hasn't been the case. Um, it's a, uh, um, the, the environment was as good of, a, of an environment as I've ever been on, on the road. Uh, you know, I thought that the, uh, uh, you know, the media coverage, the television production was was fantastic. You, you know, like you said, our, our first match, college, first day of that any college volleyball will be on one of the four major networks. Um, uh, is is just there's two things. There's a it's about time, but I think people are say, saying um, that there is so much interest in this sport that we're just kind of scratching the surface. Uh, that is really, really exciting. I mean, it's just, it's an ex extremely exciting time for our sport. We're all feeling it. I mean, it's an earthquake that's happening. And uh, uh, th to be able to show the sport in our state and around the country to a different level um, is, is really cool. Yeah, to follow a Packers game that gets massive numbers, we know how much people are excited about, about the Packers around, especially that game. You know, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. You can throw the records out when those teams play. Everybody's watching that game. And uh, to be able to be, you know, to, for that to be the lead-in, you know, the warm-up act, if you will, to, to the real show is, uh, is, is really exciting. We're, we're, ha we're happy to, to be the main act. Kind of a two-part question on Temi. Uh, obviously, she hasn't been serving. Is that something that she can use to work on in practice for potentially doing later in the year? And also, I mean, just with her playing a lot in the front row. She's kind of the third member of that, you know, Carter, Anna, block, blocking duo, I guess. You know, what? how has she sort of embraced her role as a member of the uh, there? T Timmy is a um, – you can tell. You, it, you know, it's it, – she's starting to go. You can tell. It's it's really kind of exciting to kind of watch. It, it's a uh, – you know, I felt like she, maybe she was in a little bit of quicksand early on in the year, a little bit uncertain and kind of hard to get going, and you can just tell that it's – you know, not just the matches, but practices. Starting to get a little bit more comfortable, and momentum starting to go, and and that's a really exciting time when when you're uh, a player. Yeah, her serve can give can be really gnarly. Um, uh, you know, uh, Gigi's serve. I think she's our second highest point scorer from behind the service line since we we got in the Big Ten play, and so it's since she comes in for Timmy, it's a little bit harder to. To, to make that switch. Um, but what, what I like is Timmy's serve is getting a little bit more consistent as well in practice. And it feels like if we're not scoring points off of Gigi's serve, that we can make that switch in a match at any point that we want to and be able to, to, to run with it. So your first time against Michigan State, and they're kind of in that middle of the pack in the conference trying yeah. to finish ahead of other teams in that group. What, what do you know about them, even given that it's early in the week? And But what, what's your take on them as an opponent? Yeah, it, it's early in the week. I, I'm, I'm getting into them a little bit later on. Yesterday, I slept a lot, really tired. Um, you know, today is a little bit more of watching uh, our previous match and having meetings with, with individual players. We're giving them two days off in a, a row, which is, you know, uh, three hours and 15 minutes plus plus serving pass earlier in the day and an hour warm up. I mean that's a, an awful awful lot. And so uh, we're, today was a little bit of weight room stuff. Yesterday was off. Um, so we'll get into it. But I mean, what are they? Five and five right now. I mean, they they, they just haven't been in that middle of the pack in in a few years. You know, it's a new coaching staff that's in year two. Uh, you know, they're they're getting their bearings. You can see momentum, and it's really exciting. You know, I've been a part of those with with 
with programs in the past that when you when you start getting that momentum and confidence starts being built on top of each other, it's a really exciting place. And so I, they've done a great job. They've they've had a they've had a really good season. You can tell that they're getting stronger as they're going forward. And that last question. Uh, you sort of alluded to it. I mean, obviously, pretty emotionally taxing weekend, and just you know the lead up to the match and everything. I mean. Are you going to take advantage of, you know, I guess the later start to the week with the Friday match? Like, are you going to get more off days than usual? Like, how, how are you going to, I guess, go about that? Uh, get, uh, go a little bit. I'm not quite a, sure what you're asking. It, you've been playing a bunch of Wednesday matches. Yeah. I guess, you know, how you split up the week. Are you going to try to give some more rest at the, at the front mm. of the week and stuff like that? Uh, well, hopefully we'll be able to get some good practice time the, you know, the next couple of days. Cause we just, we haven't, we, you know, based on the schedule, based off of our health, you know, like I said, MJ and, and, and Devin being out, we've had some other players we've had to manage. So I really like to be able to get a, a really good practice or two. Um, you know, I think that was part of maybe, uh, we would have been able to play a little bit cleaner on our side, although we, we did a really good job. I, I, but there were some points that you're sitting there going, God, it would have been nice to be able to, to get some sixes in in our gym the past couple weeks. Um, so I'd like to be able to do that. I'd like to be able to get some team play in and w be able to, to work with some things um, in the gym. Uh, it's nice to have a full week to be able to, to prepare. Uh, it's, it's, it's really nice. Coaches cherish those when, when you do. We try not to complain uh, because the, the uh, being able to, to get on TV in our sport and where we're going, um, you, you know, where I think most of us are taking and we'll play anywhere, anytime, any place uh, for that. Um, but yeah, having a full week is something that is right now is, is almost gold.